that simply represent how much gold you have. And that's how currency came to be. Currency was simply a piece of paper that said, look, you have this much gold, but we don't expect you to carry it around. This paper is much easier to carry around. What you saw was currency. And when you have currency that's backed by gold, it's known as the gold standard. So it's currency on the gold standard. Currency on a gold standard, meaning that that piece of paper simply represents a certain amount of precious metal. From there, most societies and most economies moved into same thing where you still use currency, <coughs> but it's currency that's no longer backed by gold, which is what the U.S. as well as most other major economies are today. Money that you have in your pocket is not backed by gold, regardless of what people may tell you. It does not represent a certain store of gold. This is known as fiat money. F-I-A-T, fiat money. Fiat money is simply money or paper currency that the value that it holds is the fact that everybody else will accept it for exchange. Now think about it. You go to buy your coffee at 7-Eleven. You give them a dollar. The reason they're going to accept that dollar is because they know that they can take that dollar and they can give it to their suppliers in exchange for inventory to sell. They can give it to their employees in exchange for their labor. They can give it to their landlord in exchange for rent of the building. They can give it to the electric company in exchange for power. Because all those parties will accept that in exchange for goods or services. The employees will be have to accept it because they can take that money and they can exchange it for food, or they can exchange it for rent, or they can exchange it for clothing. The clothing company will take that from the employee because they can then exchange it for rent, for new inventory, for wages, all those kind of things. So really, what gives money its value is the fact that everybody will accept it. And if you look at what people use for money, you can really understand how money works. Go up into Disney World, right? Because it's like 30 miles away from here. Well, it's like 70 from here. You go to Disney World, and they accept two kinds of money. They accept cash, but what else do they accept? We, credit cards basically are cash. Is in a more secure form. Disney dollars. You can buy Disney dollars. And you can buy things at Disney World with Disney dollars. Disney dollars are a form of currency. Fiat currency. Now, they're not as widely accepted as a dollar bill. In fact, the only place they're really widely accepted is Disney World. But it is a form of currency. For those of you that are fans of prison movies, what do they use for currency in prison? Cigarettes. cigarettes. Thank you for using the PG version. They use cigarettes for currency. They say, look, I will give you this number of cigarettes if you smuggle me in a pickaxe, whatever they use. That is currency, something that everybody values and is willing to accept. Now, if you walk into 7-Eleven and you offer to trade them cigarettes for coffee, they could say yes, but they'll probably say no. They would rather accept the more widely used paper currency. So it, it, this was a brief overview, but still an overview of how you have this $1 bill in one hand, coffee in the other hand, why that exchange works, but not when you rip a piece of paper out of your notebook and exchange it for goods or services. Any questions on this at all? Now, understanding this, we're then going to take this, and this is going to help you through the rest of the semester. Because we're going to, understanding money will help us get into understanding the money supply, which will lead us into monetary policy, which will lead us into banking policy. But understanding the core of what money is all about will help you understand everything else we talk about for the rest of the semester. Any questions at all? For those of you that volunteered, thank you very, very much.